good afternoon and it is afternoon it's 20 to 3 on a January day and I am in Sutherland the great big open spaces of Sutherland <sighs> there's nothing here it's <sighs> despite how many times I've been here it just never fails to surprise me every time I come up here just how big and open it is amazing place anyway heading up here today Ben Graham Moore I'm really not sure why I've got my hat on it's it's very mild at the end of January as has been a sad trend it seems this winter We've cast your mind back to November, mid-November, on Ben Vorlich. And I did say, I think I made a point of saying that I'm sceptical about early season good conditions in November. It always seems to be the way that it teases you and then disappoints. And it certainly has this year. And you can see for yourself, just as you look around, what the dominant colour is at the moment. Brown, yellow, anything but white. I've got my weather station at home in Fife and I've had it for a decade now. It's a decade that I've stayed there. And this January, I think my mean average temperature so far is it's over five degrees. The next warmest, which was three winters ago I think it's 3.5 is the mean so to have already a 1.5 or more difference across a mean average is quite alarming really it's been so mild we've had the kind of nighttime lows of five or six degrees that you'd more expect to have as daytime highs in a warm spell this time of the year and the snow has been transitory. What well, few heavy falls there have been, and there have been some, they've not lasted long. And the hills are brown, and the winters are getting leaner, less reliable, more changeable, fewer cold spells. And when we do get them, they're shorter. And it's, it's a shame. But somebody actually told me about this word that I'd not come across before, which I'm surprised I hadn't really, called solastalgia, that was coined by an environmental philosopher in Australia almost 20 years ago, when he saw what people's changing environments where they lived in Australia and the upper Hunter Valley were changing, either through drought or mining or whatever, and he saw the effect it had on people, that it makes them sad, unsettled, stressed, even mentally ill, or physically ill. Um, and he called it this thing, solastalgia, which is a mix, mix of the Latin roots of solace, uh, pain, and nostalgia. And it's to describe, as he calls it, homesickness, but when you're at home. It's a sense that your home is changing and you can't do anything about it. And it's almost, it's changing so radically, so fundamentally that it almost doesn't feel like you're home anymore. And it makes you feel unsettled. And that's exactly what I've been feeling the last, certainly this winter. Because as I say, you can have one lean winter and that can be, you get over it. It's a lean winter and you tell yourself the next year will be better. And it usually is, or it used to be. Now, it seems, year after year after year, it's becoming more difficult to get the kind of winter conditions that really sustain me throughout the whole of the year. So I'm starting to think it's changing fundamentally how I interact with this landscape and certainly in winter. And when the, the hills are looking like they are now, I don't feel the same pull to go up them. And so I do feel that I am, that I'm losing the hills in winter. I don't have any great joy to go off to walk brown hills in winter because in my head a voice is always saying this isn't how it's supposed to look and it just reminds me 
of what it should be like and how it's changing. It just makes me sad. And I don't want to have that. I don't want to be walking in the hills feeling sad. I suppose I'll get over it in time. You know, if this is the new normal, I'll get over it and it'll be the new normal and I won't think anything of it. And I might be, I might have to be glad of dustings of snow. But it is cumulative and with every year this happens, it just compounds this, what I've called this malaise, I suppose. And I feel sad. Um, and I'm not sure where it's going to all going to end up. It's going to take me a while to get over it. <sighs> I mean, it's not to say that you can't have wonderful walking experiences regardless of what the weather's doing, whether it's snowing or not. And there have been days this winter when there's been wonderful blue sky days. And you could have had an amazing time seeing magnificent things. I don't doubt that for one second, I know that. <sighs> but it's not how it's supposed to be. And that's what's driving this change in my relationship with the hills. Do you know where I stay in Fife, almost at a thousand feet, we've had, we get four, you know, we get, we've had, I think we've had three days maybe when there's been snow falling, very wet, very transitory, just for maybe a couple of minutes. This is the first time since I've stayed in Fife in those 10 years we had no lying snow this side, well the other side of New Year, running up to New Year. And now it's January the, what is it, 26th? And we still haven't had any lying snow. And we haven't had any air frosts. I mean it's just, again it's not to say that these sort of blip years don't happen. But they're happening more, fre happening more frequently. And this mildest January that I'm recorded this year, and January's not even over, but I know it's going to be that way. Last year, it was the mildest February I've recorded in the 10 years I've been there. You know, when we had that horrible 19, 20 degrees, the first time that there's been a 20 degree temperature in the UK in winter. There was that. And then the year before that was that wonderful winter when we had five month winter with the beast from the east and all that. But then the year before that, the mildest December that I've measured. So I think it speaks for itself. The writing's on the wall as to where this is all headed. Uh, so you may well ask, well, why are you heading out today if it's so awful walking in these brown hills? And it's a simple answer. If I don't get out, I'll go spare. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> here we are in Sutherland, which whatever the weather's doing, it's an incredible place. That's Loch Baden Loch down there, and as I say, that's Ben Klebrek all the way over there. But the vastness of this place takes some adjusting to if you've not been up here before, I and mean, even if you're driving. I came up yesterday, I was on a rambler's walk in Dolnane Bridge in the Cairngorms, and then I came up here afterwards. And you get up the A9, and you get to Helmsdale, and you drive up in the dark up that road, it's about 18 miles to Kimbrace. And it just, even though I've driven it a lot, I've driven that road a lot in the dark and, and in the snow in the dark. And it does feel, even though you know that you're getting somewhere and you know where you're going, it does feel like the ends of the earth. I remember staying just north of Kimbrace, between Kimbrace and Forsinard in a cottage. And my brother was coming up to stay and he'd flown into Inverness and he was coming up later. And he'd never been up here, never been north of Inverness before, I don't think. Uh, so I had I wrote him a, an email telling him how to get to the cottage and saying right when you leave Helmsdale It will feel like you're driving off the ends of the earth But have faith and press on <laughs> it's, But it has that wonderful feel to it. It's a Massive massive place. It's the sense of scale up here is unreal As I say unlike anywhere else in the UK or certainly unlike anywhere else in Scotland Currently I mean that's the top of the hill we're going to, but um, it's not a massive walk actually, it's just along this track to the loch up here, which I think people use for trout fishing, and then scooting up this ridge. It's not a big hill, it's 590 metres. It's one of a pair, there's Ben Grimm Moor and Ben Grimm Beg, so Big Ben and Little Ben. Um, and they're quite close together, but they look like a very distinctive sort of twin peaks. And they're the last notable hills, I suppose, before Sutherland peters out into Caithness and the Blanket Bogs. 
although we are now surrounded by blanket bog of course, but they are quite notable standing all by themselves. That's what we're off to do. Well, I think we have... Where are you? Oh, there you is, a golden eagle, I think. Looks like one. See, it's holding its wings very slightly upwards in a V. Always nice to see. It's still not exactly common in the Highlands, I'd say, but I think I see one. I see one most. No. Well, it's probably an exaggeration to say I see one most times I go out, but certainly if you're always scanning, especially ridge lines like that, where they do tend to sort of hunt along the top of sometimes, there's a lot to be seen. Just need to get your get your eye in a lot of the time. But only had one snowy walk since that um, walk up Ben Vorlich and it was up in the Oakles, up Ben Clue. I went up late so I could get uh, sunset, which was just astonishing, beautiful. But sadly, nothing since, not even in the Loman Hills, no snow, not even a dusting. Uh, so, this evening, this afternoon, I'm heading up late for this express reason, is that all this weather... See, it's much clearer over there now. Clearer than it was. Couldn't see those hills earlier. Uh, so I thought I'd try and head up later on the assumption that maybe it will clear that way, thinking maybe I'll get a sunset. <clears throat> Either way, it's a wonderful viewpoint up there because the surrounding land is so flat. But at this path, it's a nice way of getting a scent, even though the hill is over there, it's a nice way to gain a scent gently. This takes you up to about 250 meters, but the locks are, and then it's a 340 meter ascent. Right, well that's the lock, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go any further along there because the sun is coming out and there's only a, a small gap for the sun to come up, so I'm just gonna head straight up here and try and make the best of the light. Just look at this light. How about that? <laughs> Blue is amazing. It really brings it out. It's funny, isn't it? How it can be so grey? The water on so many days, and you get a day like this. It's wonderful. Upwards. Well, I think this is the last of the sun, but we're just getting quite a good, actually a pretty stonking view of Ben Grimm Beck, which is a smaller of the two, by about 10 meters. But it gives you a sense of what this extraordinary landscape is like. So empty. And the top, still a way off. They're small, as I say, they're not huge, but they do... The ground's still quite difficult. I mean, it may as well be snow, slushy snow underfoot, because this moss and everything underneath is um, quite slippy. All right. But I think that's the last of the sun, unfortunately, because it was just a, a thin letterbox of blue sky over there. Lots of cloud tumbling over Ben Armin over there. So it may well be the last of the sun. So maybe no sunset. But still. Brown or white or whatever, it's still nice to be out, isn't it? Ben Loyal, 
with it's looking a bit white actually so it's been clipping those showers that have been falling today the forecast is for it to get cold there's a cold front that's gone over and it's why it's, it's clearer behind and it has got noticeably colder not just up here but just generally and it is there's snow coming in even looks like it might snow at home which is typical because I'm not there to see the first falling lying snow of the season if that's what happens anyway Caithness and this part of Sutherland often in southwesterlies they're still quite protected and don't catch a lot of the weather so I wouldn't be surprised if there's maybe a thin dusting tomorrow rather than something of the amounts that they're expecting further south and west. Look at this, all this light coming through the gap in the clouds over by Ben Klebrek, that is over there. That's a massive heavy shower of some description. It's getting to be quite uh, wintry what was falling here just now. Well, how about that? That's what you want from the north. Big skies, angry weather, massive vistas, and all this water and flat land and bog. Incredible place. <laughs> well, against my better judgment, it's come good. Maybe we are going to lose it slightly because the sun's sort of it's still going down below the ridge line but that massive cloud over there is shifted and look what's opened up i'm so so pleased you know you plan something in your head and you think i'm going to get up to the top and it's all going to pan out and it's going to, the sun's going to come out just as i'm getting to the top in your head you have a sunset walk and often it doesn't work like this one Magnificent! The north! Makes it all worthwhile, eh? Right. Not far to go. Now, it's like it's on your wee hill, but finishing steeply respite all of a sudden Five past four. It's about ten minutes, fifteen minutes later than I expected. Ah. One thing I do easy to forget is how quickly darkness descends. Out here, there's no light pollution. It'll very suddenly get dark very quickly. near the top. Four, three, was it? Three ptarmigan. Standing out very bright against all this brown, but I have to say I was practically on top of them before I noticed them. But that's a stark illustration I suppose of what's happening. It's one thing saying, oh well, snow's going, maybe you'll just have to change your hill walking habits. It's affecting other creatures besides me and us, we hill walkers, in a much more severe way, what does it mean long term for things like this? That eke out their existence high up, getting forever pushed further up the hill. There comes a point when they're left marooned on these islands high up that there's nowhere else to go. Vegetation changes, creeps its way up the hill, and they'll just slowly disappear in the long term, perhaps. 
way the world's going. Give them a wide berth. And that is the top. steps and that's us at the top of Ben Grimm Moor 590 meters I dare say it looks a lot brighter on camera than it really is I mean it's not that bright it's getting quite dim so while I've still got a bit of light I'll show you what there is over here that's Ben Grimm Beck which is 10 meters shorter than this one and this is the big massive flat open expanse of the flow country massive blanket bog and over there that's looking into the hills over in the highest hills in Caithness the one in the middle it's one I did a blog from a few years ago actually that's uh, Morven and all those hills over there see the fact that it's having a hard time focusing gives you a sense of how dark it is that lock down there that's where I'm staying actually just on the lock that's in Sutherland just have a pan round while there's still light to do so but that's our final parting look I suppose of sun going down over Sutherland well I'm not hanging about up here today I'm not doing my usual tea and cake and all that sort of stuff it feels like I've had a much longer walk than I actually have I mean it's about quarter to five now so what's that two three four it's only about two hours but you get such a a variable walk up with all the different weather and different terrains sun going down then hiding it look like it's not going to come out and then that blazing sunset and then going in again and then getting dark it feels like it's been a much longer walk a much longer day than it actually is not just two and a bit hours so yeah with the sun going down dicey ground I'm gonna head straight down it's only I mean it's so close it's like a kilometre and a half down to the road. I took the long way in just so it was a nice gentle ascent. If you come straight off the edge, it's quite it's not too bad going. You've got to watch yourself because the ground's quite you know, the moss comes off, it can be quite slippy. But if you take it easy, it's quite kind and it's a nice, gentle, easy walk out. Uh, tomorrow, I haven't said anything about flow country today and all the peat and this amazing place. I haven't really given much of a sense other than giving a sense of the sense of space, I suppose. But tomorrow, all being well for the next blog I'm going to be going driving to Forsenard and then getting the train into the next station along which is I mean it's really remote it's one of the least visited stations anywhere in the UK uh, out the Breck and from there I'm going to do a little hill and then hopefully get the last train out if I get stuck out there <laughs> the last train at five o'clock which is about now and it does rely on the driver actually seeing you standing on the platform so hopefully I won't get stuck out because it's like a 15 mile walk back <laughs> if, if you miss the train in the dark so uh, yeah hopefully that won't happen anyway that's the plan for the next one and certainly in the next blog I'll tell you more about this amazing place see you then time to walk out <laughs>